I'm concentrating on the accommodations on this program, two members of a collection of properties called Connoisseur Scum. First stop, the remarkable Cameron House, located right on the banks of Loch Lomond. Cameron House dates back to 1200. Yes, I said 1200. It was a private house, so what you see was a private house under the Smollett family. And in 1200, they had a really bad fire, and then it was sort of restored to its glory in the 1600s. And the family um, still continued to live here. And then in about 1950s, it had just gone generation to generation, 1950s, the family hit some financial troubles and they converted the house and they tried to make a, an attraction. So all this land became a bear park and they got bears in and it physically became somewhere you came to see grizzly bears. Sadly, that didn't work and they had to sell up and it became a hotel. That happened in the late 1950s and at that time, Cameron House consisted solely of the main house. Over the last 15 years or so, the property has been expanded considerably. We've got 110 acres down in the main estate Literally from the front door, you could throw a stone into Loch Lomond. And the history of it is the Lennox and the Cahoon family own, and still do, the Cahoon family own pretty much as far as you can see. So Loch Lomond and Cameron House sit in part of a national park. It's um, Luss Estates. So Loch Lomond will remain as beautiful as it is now for as long as we're all here, for sure. They also like to have a bit of fun at Cameron House. There are the animal heads hanging throughout the main house, all made of paper mache. The bear with the trout was one of my personal favorites. But whether you're talking about imitation nature inside or the real thing outside, Cameron House has it all. I think the beauty of it is you're 20 minutes from Glasgow Airport, but you're a world away from anywhere. You know, it really is a feeling of total, total relaxation. And on a day like today, the sun's just coming out. It's just stunning. It's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, how about the golf course? Golf course is really taking shape this year. We're delighted. A brand new build three years old, but it really, the guys are scientists, you know, the green keepers, we don't just cut grass, it's a science, it's an art. Yeah, it's called a Carrick course. It was designed by a Canadian Doug Carrick, but the name Carrick's also very Scottish. So we decided to do a designer justice and uh, call it the Carrick Golf Course. PGA Championship, 18 hole golf course, fantastic. I could personally vouch for that. The Carrick course is terrific, especially its signature hole, the 14th. A 175-yard par 3, where you hit down a dramatic drop to a green with Loch Lomond looming in the background. After a round of golf, you're sure to work up a bit of a thirst, so how about quenching that with one of Scotland's most prized possessions, single malt scotch. At Cameron House, you can try 270 single malts at the whiskey bar. Single malt means a single malt, a single malt. and that is barley. barley yeah. Um, but uh, it, there are a lot of variations within that. There's uh, age, there's the type of vessels in which the whiskey it's is. True. Yeah, is the uh, type of still it's uh, of still. distilled in. Um, ca as you said, the vessel, the cask, if it's uh, oak, sherry, um, any type of cask you can find, bourbon casks. Um, what else would uh, be different? The, the, the unique, the, every distillery has a unique distilling process. Mm -hmm. So that's why every whiskey comes out tasting differently. It's the same process, but it's just a little bit different in every distillery. Single malts also come from one distillery and one batch. And depending on the region, highlands, lowlands, isla, etc., they can taste remarkably different. This is an interesting location because you're right on the border. Right on the border. Right yes. on the border between the highlands and the lowlands. Mm -hmm. And if you go one direction, there's a highland distillery oh. nearby. If you go in the other direction, there's the a lowland lowland distillery, distillery nearby. Correct. So why not taste one of each? Akintoshin from the Lowlands and Glen Goyne from the Highlands. The Akintoshin was first. They're quite, quite spirity, mm -hmm. but then their flavors are soft, delicate, small bit floral. I was going to say softer. Yeah, that, that, it's not dramatic. It's a, right. a breakfast whiskey as Scotch people. A breakfast whiskey. Yeah. I like that. Next came the Glen Goyne. I want to say more complex. Complex, yes. Yeah. You can smell, um, well, I, I can get toffee, nuts, um, a bit of fruit as well. Mm. A little bit, a uh, little bit fuller in the mouth too. Yeah. And longer finish. Longer finish. The further you go from the highlands, the more complex they get. Um, the more character they have. 
then once you get further down, you're coming towards the lowlands, mm -hmm. so it gets softer and softer on the way down. Highlands or lowlands, with 270 choices, there'll be no trouble finding something to suit your palate. From single malts, let's turn our attention to some of the other beverage and food options at the Cameron House. You have numerous choices, but you'll most certainly have a meal or two at the Cameron Grill, a large space with an open kitchen affording diners casual elegance and a bit of whimsy. Check out the Scottish version of The Last Supper, which serves as the room's backdrop. As for the cuisine, they're known for their steaks at Cameron Grill. This char-grilled ribeye with a mushroom, onion ring, and cherry tomatoes was a hit, as was the roast rack of lamb served with a red pepper puree and a lemon thyme potato cake. And as for dessert, well, I'd recommend tucking into Bruce's strawberry mousse anytime. Served with a champagne sorbet and white chocolate, this offering managed to be light and decadent. If you're up for a little hike, you can always come to the boathouse. Housed in a private marina, just a short walk from the main house, the boathouse is appropriately so, known for its seafood selections. They prepared a char-grilled sea bass for the camera, Sea bass was served with chorizo, potatoes, and an aged balsamic vinaigrette. If you've got a table that's into sharing, you could opt for the bucket of shrimp or the fleur de mer with clams, oysters, shrimp, greenlit mussels, and crab. My only disappointment was at 10 a.m. when we filmed this, it wasn't quite time for lunch. And since we're out and about, how about another stop at the Carrick Golf Course and its restaurant, the Claret Jug. Offering a casual pub-like atmosphere, the Claret Jug is the perfect spot to prepare for your round of golf or unwind afterwards. You'll find really good food and plenty of it here. Check out the ribeye with mushrooms, tomatoes, watercress, and a generous helping of chips. Or how about a pate of sweet cured pork with beetroot relish, microgreens, and sourdough bread. If you've got any room left, don't miss dessert, which in this case consisted of whiskey ice cream with raspberries and a honey oatmeal cake. Now, I've managed to save the best for last at Cameron House. This is Martin Wishart Loch Lomond, the property's fine dining establishment, and the second restaurant outlet for famed Edinburgh chef Martin Wishart. He actually, when he was a young lad, worked in this very kitchen with Jeff Bland, another Michelin star uh, chef from, from Edinburgh, um, who's now the executive chef of the Bell Mall mm -hmm. in, in Edinburgh. Um, he had come here and then at some point gone off to work in London uh, at Le Gavroche for Michel Roux or Albert Roux. Um, I think everything went well there. He did a bit of traveling and years later ended up being the, the head chef for Marco Pure White when he was at one of his main restaurants in London. Um, that went well, obviously came back to Edinburgh, opened up Hadrian's Brasserie at uh, the Belmoral and then when the opportunity arose he uh, took the little restaurant in, uh, in Leith and that was 10 years ago and uh, he had a lot of success with it. He well, was the first person to win a Michelin star in Edinburgh. Now Wishart has two restaurants, a cookbook, and a growing following. As for his cuisine, they do things the old-fashioned way, buying locally, keeping everything in season, and butchering and aging their own products. Boyles featured one of the aforementioned local products for the camera, duck. We start to sear the bird on all sides, starting on each breast. Once it's nice and brown and some of the fat has been rendered out, the bird goes into the oven for 15 minutes. It'll come out medium rare? Yes. What we'll do is we'll rest it for another 10 minutes after it comes out of the oven. After the duck comes out, Boyles carves it up, then puts the breast under the salamander to further crisp up the skin before seasoning, slicing, and finally plating the bird. This is the finished dish. Sliced Barbary duck breast in a duck jus, served with confit potatoes, top a mixture of spinach and haricot vert. As for the space, Martin Wishart Loch Lomond is modern, but warm and accessible. And in an age that's increasingly emphasizing casual fare, Martin Wishart is fine dining all the way. I think we're offering um, something else, something of a, of a bit higher quality that you might get in the city. So I think what we're trying to do here is, uh, is, is coexist. Uh, we're offering, you know, we're not asking for a big share of the resort. It's only 38 covers to fill. And I think people respond very well to that. I think people are up here for several nights. They might dine with us one night and dine with the other restaurants the other nights of the week. Martin Wishart Loch Lomond, sign me up. An amazing location, first-class amenities and world-class cuisine. That's Cameron House on Loch Lomond.